Hi, I'm Dr. Rashmi Yogesh, IVF Consultant, Kushi Fertility and IVF Center, Bangalore. Recurrent implantation failures. Definitely, there will be a lot of agony when one goes through an IVF repeatedly and still doesn't get a success out of it. Despite having good embryos, despite having a very good endometrial core, if there is failure to achieve a pregnancy, the mind becomes blank as to why did the pregnancy not happen. And when it doesn't happen repeatedly, what is the way forward is a very difficult question to be answered. Usually, recurrent implantation failures, I mean, when there has been a failure to achieve a pregnancy post an IVF, after three successful embryo transfers with good embryos, there can definitely be a reason much more deeper. There could be problem either with the embryos or with the uterus because the most important thing is a dialogue between the embryo and the endometrium. There could be some kind of abnormalities in the embryo, abnormal genetic makeup or genetic chromosomal makeup that makes the embryos not really strong enough to sustain to grow beyond the two weeks post implantation. Sometimes there could be auto antibodies against the embryo in the woman's uterine lining that makes it difficult for the uterus lining to accept the embryo. So these are two important things that makes pregnancy difficult. The embryo not being normal or the uterus lining not having the perfect medium to accept the endometrium. In such cases, the way forward would be test the embryos and find out if they are normal enough for implantation which can happen with the help of PGS or PGD. PGS is when we try to find out numerical abnormalities in the embryos. This is now termed as PGTA. PGD is something which now is called as PGTM. I will talk about PGD after having explained about the PGS. What actually happens in PGS is we try to find out if the chromosome numbers are normal in the embryo. Numerical abnormalities can be picked up. But sometimes there can be a deeper problem. We all know that our genetic information is all packed in the DNA and this DNA is there in storage compartments and these storage compartments are the chromosomes. As we all have to understand that there has to be 46 chromosomes in each of our cells, sometimes presence of extra or less number of chromosomes can make the embryo abnormal and not fit for a successful pregnancy. This kind of a numerical abnormality can be found out by doing a PGS or a PGTA. However, despite having chromosomally normal embryos, if there is either failure to achieve pregnancy or an abortion, then our mind has to start working deeper into the problem. What I mean to say is, not just the chromosomes, now there could also be problems in the genes. Genes are present in the chromosomes and these genes are made of DNA. So the genetic information is carried in the DNA and there is a sequence in which this genetic information has to be arranged in our chromosomes. If there is a difference, a major difference in the arrangement, then there could be genetic abnormalities that is not compatible with life. If I have to give a very practical example for better understanding, it is something like this. When we have a book, the book is supposed to have X number of pages and then whatever is written in the book is the meaning that the book carries. Similarly, you can imagine our cell to be like a book. The number of pages in the book is like the number of chromosomes. So if the book is supposed to have 46 pages, then our cell is supposed to have 46 chromosomes. So the pages are like the books. And each page comes in pairs. So here we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and 23 pairs of pages in the book. And whatever is written in the book is the gene. I mean the spellings, A-N-D, T-O can all be called as 
genetic sequences and the ink with which the print is done on the book is our DNA. So what happens in genetic abnormalities is is just like having multiple spelling mistakes in the book. Like multiple spelling mistakes in the book, there could be multiple genetic abnormalities. And if the same spelling mistake is there in both the husband and the wife's cells, I mean the husband and the wife's books, there could be genetic abnormalities in the embryo that makes it difficult for the embryo to thrive. Therefore, analyzing this is a very important step when there is multiple implantation failure. What we actually do is that do something called as a clinical exome or a medical exome sequencing which is only a blood test. This is a test which is done on the couple to find out if there are some genetic abnormalities in either or both of them and if this genetic abnormalities is a prominent one then we try to look for the same in the embryo and this test is nothing but testing for the specific genetic abnormality in the embryo with PGTM or PG. D which was called previously. This is called PGTM because it looks for monogenic disorders. Therefore, understanding if the embryo is normal is a very important tool in cases of repeated implantation failures. The next is the uterus. If the uterus looks fine with respect to the endometrium showing a good triple line appearance with good blood supply with all the vascular indices being normal and still this a difficulty in achieving pregnancy then we have to look into the autoimmune part of the body to understand if there are some natural killer cells in the uterus that is actually preventing the implantation from happening sometimes there could be autoantibodies wherein the uterus would reject the embryo as being a foreign one or something wherein the 50% of genetic material of the own self is rejected because of an autoimmune factor. In such cases, there could be a test which is done to understand if there are autoimmune markers in the body which can show up with tests like anti-nuclear antibodies and also tests like ACCP and also other tests like the natural killer cell assay from the uterine endometrial fluid. Sometimes the tests do reveal that there is a problem and sometimes despite there being an element of autoimmunity, these tests do not reveal that there is something like that. Most of the times in such cases, empirically during the time of embryo transfer, some drips are given to increase the chance for implantation. These drips are intralipid infusions which are known to reduce the natural killer cells in the uterus and sometimes immunoglobulins are also given to increase the chance for implantation. They are given in doses that don't cause any harm. Of course, the doses can be different and in a higher dosage when natural killer cells and autoimmune factors show up as positive in the blood workup. And when it is not positive, still on an empirical basis, certain amount of these intralipid infusions and drips can be given in the form of immunoglobulin injections and drips to reduce the chances of a rejection. However, despite using tools like PGT and PGT, PGT, M and A and despite doing everything to increase the chance for implantation, still if pregnancy doesn't happen, then there opens up a different path. One can opt to change one of the gametes or think in lines of surrogacy to make pregnancy a possibility. Therefore, recurrent implantation failure is something for which one has to start thinking logically and try to find out reasons rather than get depressed and take your mind off from trying for pregnancy further.